All right, g'day everyone. Welcome back to the True Footy YouTube channel. It's an exciting day. I think it's the first day that the free agency period is opened, if I'm not mistaken. I believe that is happening this week. And then uh, obviously on October 9th, we have our actual AFL trade period, which is really exciting. And I tell you what, it's nice to have the grand final behind us. All this tiresome grand final, yeah, great, who cares? Does it actually matter who wins the premiership? This, the trade period and the draft period, this is where the real season begins. At least from a West Coast point of view, as an Eagles fan, I like to pretend that's true because now, when it comes to the trade period and the draft, we exist in a paradigm where the Eagles can't lose a game of football by 171 points. So I'm very, very excited. So today I am going to do uh, somewhat of a prediction of what's going to be ahead in this upcoming trade period. And I guess for the part of it, the, the function of this video will be to try and collate a lot of the updates I've been sort of accumulating over time for you guys. Obviously, you know, once a week I sort of update what's new in the trade period world. So today's kind of just collating uh, all of those rumors into one video and offering maybe predictions if that's the right word or certainly offering what the likelihood of each deal happening is as it currently stands. Now I'm aware that this video probably won't release for 12 hours after I'm recording it and there is a possibility that at the opening of the free agency period we see a few things happen that I didn't expect so I'm probably going to shoot myself in the foot but bear with me. It's going to be a relatively big trade period. I don't think we're going to see the same big names. Uh, you know, Certainly we would have heard about them by now. We may not have A-grade stars moving but we will have some very very good role players it can definitely add some value to other teams and then you know there's pick swaps as well the world of player movement has really exploded in the last five to ten years in particular and there's going to be some drama i have no doubt about that so i'm looking forward to all of that they expect about 30 players to change clubs across the trade period and the free agency uh period as well so in this video i don't know if i've got all 30 but i'm certainly trying to capture exactly what's going to happen or at least what is likely to happen obviously uh things do change throughout the trade period as we know from previous ones how i've formed out of this video i'm going to run through all of the 18 teams alphabetically i'm going to remember gws this time and we're going to discuss you know the players that are likely to retain recruit and trade away before we get into the video uh this has been a wonderful period of growth for the channel i really really appreciate it about 42 percent of the people who watched the channel over the last 28 days haven't actually subscribed to the channel so if you are enjoying the content and you're looking forward to some trade period and it, as well the draft is upcoming as well if you like that sort of content this is a good channel to subscribe to so i'd really appreciate it if you help me out cool so it makes sense to run through the club's alpha Alphabetically, and we'll start with the Adelaide Crows and what they're likely to be getting up to and what they'll be focusing on in this upcoming trade period. In terms of players in, there isn't a whole lot going on at Adelaide. The one that's somewhat concrete is they're probably going to end up with Gold Coast Chris Burgess, who has had a terrific year in the last few years in the VFL. He's kicked 114 goals from 37 games. And when you consider the potential outs for the Crows, namely Himmelberg and McAdam, which we'll elaborate on later in the video as well, but a little bit of scoring power goes out. Chris Burgess comes in as a bit of depth. He's only played three games across the two seasons at Gold Coast. So they'll likely lose Himmelberg and McAdam on the uh, on the balance of probability right now. I do think they will end up with Chris Burgess. And the Tom Dode situation, again, this was one that we might have an answer on in the next week. I'm going to say he's more likely to stay at the Crows than not. I think if you look at the Crows situation here in general, Himmelberg, McAdam, to add Tom Dode on that list of departures, I think would be a bit of a crushing blow. I think he's waiting on some more security. He wants a larger contract from Adelaide, but he's also considering uh, the Brisbane Lions in particular, and I think Collingwood have also inquired about him as well. But if I'd offer a prediction, Adelaide lift their offer at the last minute, give him an extra year or whatever he wants, and they keep Tom Dode. Then we've got the Brisbane Lions, and uh, they are relatively quiet, I think, in terms of what's expected to happen in terms of you know players staying and going. As I just mentioned, they are probably leading the race for Tom Dode if he doesn't stay at the Adelaide Crows. They're looking for a bit of defensive reinforcement with Marcus Adams retiring, Daniel Rich is also retiring, and Tom Dode is a quality player and even though he's going to miss half of 2024 reportedly there is a really decent offer on the table for him so there is a good chance that Tom Dode does join the Brisbane Lions outside of that I know that they've expressed interest in Nick Caulfield although I'm not sure how likely that is to happen probably less than a 50-50 but they've inquired about him nonetheless and uh, on the other players that were potentially going to leave Kai Lohman has decided to stay with the Brisbane Lions he's extended his contract uh, he's a player we've talked about as potentially moving clubs another one is Devin Robertson there is still no answer on that but the fact that he played in Brisbane Lions 
Lions losing grand final team, um, I suggest to me, given his motivation is to try and, you know, regularly play games at AFL level, he's been rewarded with that for the most part in the back end of this year. I think it's a pretty safe bet that Dev Robertson stays, but we'll see what happens. The West Coast does loom uh, with a better contract offer, but I expect Devin Robertson to stay at the Brisbane Lions. Then you've got Carlton, who have typically been active in recent trade periods, but this one's going to be relatively quiet. They do have a couple of players uh, likely to request trades in Paddy Dow and Zach Fisher, and there's a couple of players they're linked to via trade as well. They're most likely going to end up with Elijah Hollands, brother of Ollie, of course, and it's been reported a future second round pick is the most likely deal to get him from the Gold Coast Suns. They've also been sniffing around Hayden Crozier, most likely as a delisted free agent uh, if he does get the chop from the Western Bulldogs, which at this stage looks more likely than not. So Hollands, I think you can take to the bank. I reckon that will happen. Crozier is a little bit iffy, but if he gets delisted, expect Carlton to sign him. They're also one of four teams to be linked to uh, Melbourne's James Harms as well, but at this stage, there's been no real indication who's leading the race for that, so we'll see what happens. The reigning premiers, Collingwood, similarly don't have a lot going on when you compare it to other teams this trade period. It does seem that Todd Goldstein is more likely to end up at Collingwood than anywhere else. I think I suggested in the last video he'd formally requested a trade. I think it's more so that he's expected to request a trade to Collingwood, but he he won't be at North Melbourne next year. So Goldstein to Collingwood, I feel relatively confident on. Uh, in terms of players going out, there's not a lot going on. Obviously, I did mention they're in the hunt for Tom Doday, but they're probably second or third in the pecking order for that. So I'm not too confident on that. But in terms of players leaving, uh, they've got a couple of young players. Trent Bianco is likely to probably get delisted at this stage, at least reading the tea leaves. I expect him to find a new club at AFL level. And Finlay McRae, I believe, has a contract for next year, but can't get a game. So there is a possibility that clubs come sniffing around for those two youngsters. Then we've got Essen and these guys are going to be major players once again in this upcoming trade period. We've talked about Ben Mackay. The particulars of exactly how Ben Mackay is going to get to Essendon is still murky. I've talked about that in previous videos. We know he's a free agent. He's likely to nominate Essendon as preferred club. In fact, I think he has nominated that, but when the free agency period opens, that will become formalized. So it then, uh, then the big question remains, what will happen with regard to his compensation in terms of North Melbourne? And there has been some suggestion in recent times that the offer from Essendon is unlikely to trigger band one compensation, which I've talked about on this channel. And I know that hasn't been taken particularly well, but I'm just really re passing on what I've read. The truth is, I don't know. There is a threshold at which this contract will offer um, North Melbourne a band one compensation pick, which would be pick three at this stage. Failing that though, uh, North Melbourne are likely to match an offer which would force this into the upcoming trade period. So I'm a little bit nervous to make a prediction on it, but I think it's pretty certain he will end up at Essendon. I've got a funny feeling though, it won't trigger band one compensation. This one could drag out to the trade trade period. Other than that though, Essendon has also been talked about being involved with St Kilda for this uh, this swap of Dylan Shield and Jade Gresham. Again, as I said in a previous video, I think this was mistakenly reported on, but it seems like what is likely to happen is Essendon sign Jade Gresham, uh, potentially getting band one or band two compensation, most likely band two you'd think for a player like Jade Gresham who is good, but not elite. Therefore that would generate say pick 20 for St Kilda. St Kilda would then do Essendon a favor by taking a salary dump of Dylan Shield onto their books. We know St Kilda, who I'll elaborate on later, needs some midfield reinforcement. So the Saints would get Dylan Shield. So that's probably going to happen based on how it's being reported on. That for me likely gets done for a later pick. It might be pick 31. It might be a little bit later. Uh, other than that, Essendon has probably been one of the stronger teams linked to James Harms. But like I said, this one is a little bit murky. So to summarize, in Jade Gresham, Ben Mackay, James Harms, at the expense of Dylan Shield and Massimo D'Ambrosio, who has requested a trade to Hawthorne. Then we've got the free Mantle Football Club. And pleasingly, from their perspective, this is a trade period where it doesn't look like they're going to lose a quarter of their list. Uh, obviously, they've had some retention issues at the moment. And uh, they do kind of add to that with Liam Henry, who is almost certainly going to leave them. Uh, and it looks at this stage to be St Kilda, who, again, we'll elaborate on later, but they've been up to their neck in it. How does this still happen? Probably the Gresham compensation pick. I know free Mantle are, are, are good negotiators, and they have a good proven history of getting good deals for the players that leave, at least in terms of value, not in terms of necessarily how it worked out. So I'd say pick 20, which probably becomes pick 25. And I think that's fair. I think Liam Henry had a good improved year this year, but hasn't really delivered on that top 10 pick potential. You know, he was drafted at pick nine. So other than Liam Henry going out, uh, Jeremy Sharp is a small name out of the Gold Coast Suns who played in their VFL Premiership, who has previously tried to get to Fremantle, I think it was 12 months ago. And uh, now he's out of contract that is likely to happen this year. 
Keep an eye as well on Trey Rusko, who uh, there's rumors of him heading back to WA. It could be to either WA club at this stage, but Trey Rusko to Fremantle is a slight possibility. Then we've got Geelong, and I would say their main concern this trade period is trying to derive maximum value for Asava Radaglia, who has requested a trade to Port Adelaide. And I think Geelong have suggested they're into Port Adelaide's future first round pick. For me, I think that's kind of ludicrous. Sure, it could be posturing and they're probably just doing their thing. So fair enough. But that won't happen. It's more likely to be a future second, maybe at best, if Port Adelaide can even trade it. Port Adelaide's going to have to do a hell of a lot of work to try and get enough pieces to trade for all their targets. We'll talk about them later. Other than that, Geelong have clearly got a strong strategy of transitioning some youth into their list. At the moment, they've got pick seven. And uh, I believe Andrew Mackey sort of suggested that pick seven may be on the table for, you know, the right offer. And this was reported on heavily. To be honest, I have no idea how to seriously to take that because in theory, every pick's on the table for a good enough deal. So I think they'll probably hold their pick seven, but there is a chance that, you know, live trading on draft night, if that pick seven becomes pick nine, which I think it will, that means that they're outside the top eight prospects, which are considered elite in this draft. Maybe Geelong trade down and get an extra pick in the second round. They don't have a second or third rounder, I don't think, this year. I think that ended up at Gold Coast. So, as it seems so far, Geelong, after being pretty good traders in re- previous years, are going to have a quiet trade period. We'll move on to the Gold Coast Suns, who, again, uh, up to their neck in it this year, mostly with players leaving the club and also with their own uh, desire to trade up or trade down rather, sorry, and accumulate points for their three academy players in this year's draft. The four players that they're linked to losing, which are more likely to happen than not, uh, Mabi Chol. Elijah Hollands, Chris Burgess, and Jeremy Sharp. I've mentioned three of those four already. So clearing a little bit of money off the books for the Gold Coast Suns, and they'll probably be trading their pick four, and I think that the club is likely to be North Melbourne who gets that, which we'll talk about later. Okay, guys, before we continue with the rest of the video, I do have an important message to share with you. As you'd know, this year, True Footy has started working with the fantasy platform called Game Day Squad, and on behalf of Game Day Squad, I have something pretty awesome to share with you, and that is, if you haven't already, that they have just launched for AFLW. That means you can start fresh with a new squad and team and again, win weekly prizes. This is your chance to get ahead of the game and make a team for the start of the brand new season. So make sure you follow the link in the description to both creating a team on Game Day Squad and signing up to the True Footy League, which is of course completely free. Let's transform women's fantasy Aussie rules into a sensational reality. Here we go, GWS fans. I remember to include you in this video this time. Sorry that I forgot about it last time. Uh, The players that they're likely to be interested in this year, so far, it just appears to be Elliot Himmelberg. It seems the Giants, obviously, still looking for reinforcements uh, in their forward half, particularly Talls. Then there was also the notion of uh, reuniting the Himmelberg brothers. This is the only concrete link I've seen in recent times, and Adelaide are probably doing a bit of rejigging with their forward line as well. So Himmelberg to the Giants has potential. Uh, There is also a lot of talk about Nick. Haynes potentially being a salary dump trade, but at this point, it's unclear whether there's a market for him. Obviously a quality player, but he comes with a heavy price tag. So this one's fascinating. I really don't have any idea where he would end up. Any team that's really looking for some mature quality defensive uh, experience, uh, maybe an Essendon, but again, it seems like they've got enough on their plate. Then uh, finally, there is a real possibility that Matthew Flynn joins West Coast as a free agent, a ruckman who can't quite get a game at the Giants, and uh, it's being talked about by Toomey as though it's more likely to happen than not. Then you got Hawthorne, and uh, you know, in terms of the, they've had two players that have requested trades out of the club in Jacob Kaczynski to Richmond and Tyler Brockman to the West Coast Eagles. They've also had a player formally request a trade to them in Massimo D'Ambrosio, and that is uh, at this stage all that's been formally out there. However, they have been linked to Mabio Chol in recent times and probably for my mind makes the most sense to actually pick him up so I would expect Mabio Chol probably does nominate Hawthorne if he doesn't end up at Adelaide. Then you've got the North Melbourne Football Club and this is an intriguing off season for them. Uh, There is a desire to obviously improve their draft position and there is a chance they get a couple of experienced players in there as well. Of course, they've had a few retirements. A lot of experience leaving the club at the moment. Obviously, Zeebel and Cunnington and Todd Goldstein is likely or almost certain to leave the club as well. So the experience that is likely to come into their list is that Zach Fisher is uh, more likely than not to request a trade imminently to North Melbourne. That's being reported on. He's got a four-year deal, I think, on offer from Clarkson's club. The other one is Dylan Stevens, who is uh, very likely to leave the Sydney Swans this off-season and North Melbourne is considered the most likely team to get him. So that's two pretty good good, young, experienced players that can improve North Melbourne's best 22 in the short term. I also expect with their priority pick package that they will be a major player for Gold Coast pick four. 
So in a crazy scenario, there is a chance that North Melbourne ends up with picks two, three, and five after uh, the academy bit of Jed Walter. That pick three does depend on the Ben Mackay compensation as well. So again, we'll mention for North Melbourne, if the offer for Ben Mackay doesn't trigger band one compensation, they're likely to be well involved in the trade period with Essendon. Then we'll talk about the Melbourne Football Club. And uh, in terms of trying to get players onto their list, there seems to be more leaving the club than joining it at this stage. They obviously hold a pretty strong draft position as well. Uh, we know about Brody Grundy, we've talked about that on the channel, seems very, very likely to end up at the Sydney Swans. James Jordan might also follow him to the same club. And then there's James Harms, who we've talked about, who's been linked to three clubs, and one of them is Sydney as well. So this could be a three-player deal to one club. I have suggested recently on the channel, Adam Tomlinson might have made way. I think it was last year he nearly ended up at the Western Bulldogs. However, he has been told he is a required player, so they will retain him. They're also going to recruit Shane McAdam, who has requested a trade from the Adelaide Crows, as previously reported on. In terms of other trade deals for them, I think they might make serious offers to try and improve their draft position. They've got a handful of picks in the top 40. They're also still an outside chance to trade for pick one because of their interest in Harley Reid that's been well reported on as well. I don't think it will happen, but I expect them to make a formal offer to West Coast for pick one. Then we've got probably the most active team in this trade period who have uh, four players linked to Port Adelaide this offseason. We'll go through them. Brendan Zerk Thatcher has requested a trade for Essendon. Isava Radaglia, as I previously mentioned. Sorry, I forgot to mention Zerk Thatcher for Essendon. Jordan Swede has requested a trade to Port Adelaide. And there is still serious interest in um, Ivan Soldo from Richmond. So that's two key defenders and two rucks. Very, very curious strategy from Port Adelaide here, trying to load up on some genuine tolls and really shake up uh, the composition of their best 22. We know Tom Clure is likely to leave the club. Uh, he's got two years remaining on a deal, but surely with these targets, someone's going to make way. Last set is a chance to retire or find a club in Victoria. It seems more likely to be a retirement at this stage. There has been talk in recent times of Xavier Dersma being uh, a serious point of interest for some Victorian clubs, but I expect he's more likely to stay considering his contract situation. And Arazi Fantasia as well is considered more likely to stay after a few rumors of a request, I think at one point back to Essendon. So Port Adelaide is going to have a really big headache this off season. Uh, none of the players that they're linked to will um, really require too much in terms of draft pick compensation. They will need to consider some salary cap as well. These are four mature players that are all moving interstate. And the fact that they just don't have a good draft position as well this year. So it has been uh, reported that they are open to trading their future first, not for Asava Radaglia, but for more draft pick collateral this year to try and get some of these targets in. So Port Adelaide really loading up to improve their depth of this squad right now. Then we'll talk about Richmond, who, uh, you know, it's just an intriguing trade period for them because I think they need to make moves to try and get some more young talent on their list. They went into this year probably expecting to do better. Don't have a first round draft pick um, and it's not a great position to be in uh, considering they have kind of hit a crossroads with their list. However, I think their big focus this off season will be trying to improve uh, said draft position. The players they're linked to lose are Ivan Soldo and Hugo Ralph Smith curiously also does not have a contract with Richmond next year so a couple of small time trades there that they could uh, ship off to other clubs to try and get a bit more collateral they are one of the teams linked to James Harms as well so some mature talent for them in that midfield Jacob Krasitsky has also requested a trade from Hawthorne so that's one player they're likely to get in um, and these are some ideas for players I think that uh, are currently potentially gettable to quote you know Toomey and Riley Beveridge for a second there sorry uh, but some ideas would be you know the guys I mentioned in this video Finn Lane McRae, uh, Trent Bianco, and Toby McLean as well is currently not contracted with the Western Bulldogs for next year. So failing an ability to nab a first rounder from Gold Coast or anything this year. Some good mid-tier, semi-mature, but young enough kind of players like that, I think Richmond will seriously look at considering the experience they've lost this year. Then we've got the Saints. And again, we're going to be very proactive this trade period as well. I've already talked about a lot of their targets. One of them is going to be Dylan Shield. I've already outlined in the Essendon segment exactly how that deal is going to go down, at least in my opinion. Liam Henry is uh, pretty likely to join the club through trade. Again, maybe for the Gresham compensation. Paddy Dow has also been heavily linked to St. Kilda this offseason, although in more recent times, he's been linked to the Sydney Swans as well. So, Shield, Henry, and Dow come in to reinforce the midfield, and it does look like they're going to lose Jade Gresham through free agency, as we said. There's a couple of players with question marks on them. Uh, Nick Caulfield still unclear, and Jack Billings as well. Jack Billings is contracted at this stage. However, he's obviously been in and out of the team for a start, but also I think over the next two years, years, he's going to be paid a million dollars a year. So it's going to be tricky to find a market for Jack Billings, but there is a chance he moves club. At this stage, I'd say they're more likely to keep him out of, well, a lack of a market for a player that expensive. 
Then you've got the Sydney Swans, and uh, they have naturally been linked to Brody Grundy in a well-publicized uh, trade request. I don't know if that's been formalized yet. However, it was reported that uh, Sydney were the most likely to get him. I think money will dictate exactly how much it costs for Brody Grundy. I think we can rule out uh, anything earlier than a second rounder at best. But this will also depend on you know how much Sydney have to pay. If Sydney you know foot a lot of the bill, it'll be a cheap deal. If Melbourne are paying for it or Collingwood are paying for it, then it changes his value a little bit there. They, like I said, they've been linked to. James Jordan through free agency. That one, it seems almost certain to happen. And in the last couple of days, been linked to Paddy Dow as well. So some uh, mature midfield depth for them. Then we got the West Coast Eagles. I have already covered this club in a previous video, but they are linked to recruit Tyler Brockman, who has formally requested a trade. Matthew Flynn is likely to join through free agency, but at this stage, it is far from confirmed. Their other trade target, Devin Robertson, at this stage, we haven't heard about an update for it for a few weeks now. I do think, however, like I said in the Brisbane segment of this video, that Devin Robertson's presence in the grand final and playing for the Brisbane Lions throughout the back end of that year is probably going to be enough for him to decide he wants to stay at a side that could win a premiership. And obviously with the West Coast list at the moment, they're a fair way off doing that. So I expect the Eagles will miss out on Devin Robertson. They'll get Brockman and Flynn. And like I said earlier, keep it on Trey Rusco as well. There is a chance that he requests a trade home to uh, WA. And it was also rumored earlier this year that he toured uh, West Coast facilities. Obviously much is going to be talked about, uh, in including on this channel of potentially trading pick one. At this stage, I would say it's less likely than likely, although there is still a chance it happens. I've done a whole video on this, um, you know, like a week ago, right before the grand final, expressing my thoughts on it but I do still think having said all I said in the video it's less likely to happen than happen and finally we've got the Western Bulldogs again not a lot to report on in terms of them um, you know getting players in we know they're probably going to retain Bailey Smith that's almost certain this stage despite all the speculation throughout this year they're probably linked to lose a few fringe players Jordan Sweet's going to join Port Adelaide most likely Hayden Crozier is either going to be delisted or traded to Carlton and Buku Kamas as well a fringe player who can't really crack a game there is likely to end up at another club it's unclear who yet in terms of trade targets in, not a lot has been really said other than a vague interest in Nick Caulfield from St Kilda, although like I said, I still think he's more likely to stay than go, but a lot can happen over the next couple of weeks. So it may be a quiet trade period for the Dogs. As I said before, Toby McLean is actually out of contract there, which uh, considering his talent surprises me a little bit, but I think uh, there is a chance that he gets traded for another club. I don't think he would simply be delisted. I think he's better than that. But anyway, guys, that is my take on uh, everything that's happening in the trade period world. So this is a big prediction slash preview video for you. Let me know if I missed anything there's it's I tried to be as comprehensive as possible but often I let things slip through the cracks so as always I welcome your input your comments your suggestions and uh, really appreciate it as always look out for more content coming soon on the channel subscribe to the channel if you haven't already and I'll see you in the next video cheers